Hey everyone, it's Taryn with The Remote Yogi, and I am so excited to be introducing you to my dear friend, Shuli, today. I met Shuli on Remote Year, actually. She was the first one I met before we even started the trip. I was out in Houston, and that's where she's from, and we got to connect and immediately felt um, sisterhood with somebody else in the community because we were both freaking out about what to pack and the adventure we were going to begin on. And then I got to know Shuli throughout the year. We were roommates at one point and I loved the conversations she would bring. And she began hosting workshops on having hard conversations. And I knew immediately I needed to get her on this show and blog so you guys can have um, some amazing lessons from Shuli. And we're going into the holiday season. So we're going to dig into how to have some tough conversations as we get into holiday parties and family outings and all that fun. But before we dig in, Shuli, I'd love for you to introduce yourself, tell your story, especially your fear to freedom story. I want to hear what you describe as your fear to freedom and um, how you got there. Awesome. Well, great to see you again. First of all, can I just say I took Tara into a restaurant that was not vegan. I had no idea. And they had catfish and grits and all of this Southern cuisine. And that was our first introduction. But she was awesome. Speaking of hard conversations, she navigated that really well. But um, <laughs> It felt like home to me. I'm from Texas originally. So, you know, it's all good. Yeah, yeah it was cool. But my fear to freedom journey <laughs> has, of course, peaks and valleys. I'm Shuli Gibson. I am by career a speech pathologist. And what that means is I help people who have voice problems and those who have fears of expressing themselves. I help them to have the freedom and confidence to communicate. And I call it speak success because our words have power. We have the power to create or destroy with the words. And I give the people, I equip them and empower them with the tools, the attitude, the skills, and the knowledge to seek their success and overcome the challenges, whether it's career or in personal situations. But I started out as a regular speech pathologist doing what you would consider traditional speech work, helping people. And then my life just took a turn. My dad died. And he had prostate cancer and he transitioned. And as a result, I took on my siblings, um, three kids. I was 27 years old and my life just changed drastically. And I've had to have a lot of hard conversations. I went through a lot. At that time, I was so focused on my career, so focused on ticking and checking boxes and making sure that my life lined up and I lived the life that I wanted to live. And then I had this huge obstacle and I became free as I learned how to navigate it. But for the longest, I wore this mask. I was the good little girl, the person that everybody wanted me to be, the person that I needed to be. And when I look back at it, I had so many fears. I woke up in like 2015 and I realized that, damn it, I was scared. I was scared, mm -hmm. like afraid that I was going to be a horrible mom that I wasn't being the best person I could be, that I was not showing up in the world. And from that moment of awareness, my life just took on a different turn. The universe stepped in and I've been growing ever since. It became apparent to me that most people do not overcome their fears because fear looks like loneliness and sadness and changing up your whole world. And when I embraced it, I did. I had a lot of loss. I had a lot of conversations. People thought I was crazy, losing my mind, especially when I told people I was selling my house and traveling the world <laughs> for a uh -huh. year with a group of strangers. And it was the best decision I ever made. And so we're here. And you touched on a bunch of things I want to bring it back to. But I think one of the, the big things that you touched on was you know, the fact that a lot of people get stuck in these fear patterns. And I talk about it a lot in my blog, the limiting beliefs that we hold for ourselves. And, and then when we do start on that personal development journey, it can be really lonely. Um, because mm -hmm. usually, unless we have guidance around us, and people are already on that journey, usually it's you start on your own. And sometimes your friends catch up with you. Sometimes they don't. And that can be a big challenge or when your family doesn't catch up with you and you're starting to kind of progress um, in the opposite direction. So 
yeah, the loneliness yeah. you mentioned, I, people ask me about that all the time on my blog. Mm-hmm. How did you deal with that as you were making these decisions that you knew would be best for you, even though your tribe around you was not on board? Yeah. My tribe in my family tribe that I was born into tribe, but then I had a couple of people that really supported me Two two important people, my friend, Pat, and my bestie, Kenya, she lives in St. Louis. And when I told her I got accepted into remote year, because I didn't tell anybody, I just applied and I was kind of dealing with it. Like I got in, <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, am I really going to go? And I talked to her about the process and she was like, girl, if you don't go, I feel like you're going to miss an opportunity of a lifetime. I don't know how you're going to do it but I think you should. And let me go back and tell you with my business, everything, when I say the universe lined up to the point of pain and discomfort, my business, even though I worked so hard, it seems like everything was falling apart around me. I went through a really bad year with the business. And there was one time, like I remember this one time I was at a gas station, like digging in my cup for change to get gas. Like it had gotten that bad for me. So I was like, how in the world am I going to go on a trip around the world when everything in my life is so inconsistent? I think that's the part I didn't share on remote year. Everything in my life was so inconsistent. And she was like, I just feel like you should go. You should trust it. You got in. That means something. And this is not the time to start back being scared, basically. And I did it. I said yes. And then the world just opened up. And I'm telling you, I sold my house within a month. Um, The first month of being on remote year, because I thought I had a job lined up and I thought I had everything where I could like the job didn't work out. And I was there like, oh, shoot, month one job. Yeah, not working out. But in terms of that, so I had a support system. And if it wasn't for Pat, I would still be trying to pack and move my house. She's an interior designer, straight up project manager. And she helped me like get everything organized, downsize garage sales, like this blitz that I did to get everything packed up. So not my family. I'll say this, your tribe is not always the one that you're born into. You find people and you meet people along the way. And I've been very fortunate. Yeah. To do that. But it was lonely for sure. Yeah. And, and once we get into the hub of trusting the direction we're going in and like putting faith in the universe, the right people start to kind of fall into place. And, um, we start to cultivate our own communities Mm -hmm. around us. Um, but it does take time. And so that can be really challenging. I also just want to commend you, um, for the work that you do, because I don't know if many people know this, but I grew up with a speech impediment and I couldn't say my R's until I was probably closer to 10. Um, and it was really, really challenging. Like I couldn't even pronounce my own name properly. Um, so that was hard for me. And I grew up kind of on stage and wanting to be the center of attention and then was told that like, I couldn't because my voice wasn't great. And then, you know, you carry that on through your life. And as an adult, I'm, I'm recovering trauma about places in my life where I thought I wasn't worthy of sharing or using my voice whether it's speaking up for myself in a situation or even becoming a teacher to be the center of the room when I was teaching yoga was very like intimidating to me. Um, How do you help your clients kind of navigate through the traumas of their life into owning and valuing their voice? The ask method is what I said when I say that I equip and empower them with the attitude, skills, and knowledge. That's the ask method. Attitude is First of all, we deal with, like you said, traumas. That was the best word because when I'm working with adults who have gone through childhood and maybe they did not get speech services when they were younger or they got them and then something shows up and they're now just afraid of speaking in public, whatever the case may be, we have to deal with the attitude which comes with behaviors and how they feel about themselves, the messages that they're communicating, that self-talk and their esteem and all of those kind of things. So that's the first thing I like to look at, the whole person, which is why I said my my fear to freedom journey served me because at first it was so, this is the model that you use and it was very scientific and you had the different methodologies, but it kind of neglected the whole person and I became more sensitive to people and what it means to 
deal with these challenges. So we, we deal with maybe the first couple of sessions of whatever the person needs, they can come in and they can cry. I had one guy, he had to scream to own his power because he felt so trapped and he was forced to be quiet. He couldn't speak up for himself. And I'm just, in, I'm led intuitively on what to do in those type sessions where we're helping the person to break free. And I become not only a speech pathologist in that moment, I'm their freedom coach is what I call it. And we deal a lot with that. And you have to get the attitude straight before you can even jump into the skills and the knowledge. Then the person becomes open and we can talk about how to begin to improve. And then I teach them about their system and give them the power to help themselves. Because when you understand about your body and the mechanics and how it works, if you're in a situation and it's tough, then you know what to do. You don't mm-hmm. depend on me. I teach you to depend on yourself and trust yourself and in your abilities to overcome. That actually makes a lot of sense because I find mm-hmm. when I'm working with clients who are having depression or anxiety or stress issues, once I can teach them how the brain's working when they're feeling stressed and anxious, when I can show them the mechanisms of the brain and, and the ways we can naturally kind of work against that, it's so much easier to feel in control when you know it the is. mechanisms. And that I never thought about that with the voice too. Like it's less intimidating to be in front of an audience when you know what's happening or like what's, yes. you know, what's going on with your voice. Yes, for sure. I love that. So coming up on holidays, it's, we're filming mm. this right before Thanksgiving, but this will be coming out uh, before Christmas. A lot happening around the Christmas season, whether it's office parties or family functions or you know places you may or may not want to be. Um, I noticed that sometimes when I used to work corporate environments, people are you know getting drunk or talking about things that maybe I'm not comfortable talking about at an office party or family party, whatever it is. Um, and sometimes it's not the right environment to like have that hard conversation right then and there. What are some tips that you might have for like politely excusing yourself from like awkward situations at parties? That feeling <laughs> I'm, I'm in the moment, right? I'm going to a moment when that person wants to pull you aside to have a conversation about something happening because I feel like going into it, if you know that you've had a challenge with the person, sometimes you're thinking about it anyway, like, oh my gosh, I have to be in this environment with this person that I feel some type of way about. And maybe we do our best to avoid because most people do avoid those hard conversations and about 50% of people avoid the conversation. Mm -hmm. And certainly the office Christmas party combined with libations is not the best time to do that. So, but you don't want to run from it and avoid it because to the degree that you never come back to it, because we know that problems unaddressed get bigger, they get worse Mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. But if the timing is not quite right and they come to you and they say, Hey, um, do you have a minute? I want to talk about blah, 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 blah. And you can just easily say, I would really love to talk to you about it. Can we set up a time? Maybe once we get back to work, like, let's enjoy the night. But if they Mm -hmm. outright confront you, you have permission at that time to just say, excuse me, I'm not having this conversation with you right now. It's not a great time. You can be as assertive as you need to be. You can try the polite way and set another time. Or you can just say, I'm not having this conversation with you right now. It's not a great time to do it. Or if you are not good with that, at all. And that's a little bit too hard still to do that hard walk away. You can just, you can just say, excuse me, I need to go over here and talk to so-and-so. Let's, well, let's chat later. Like you can be nice as nice. There's an assertive ladder. You don't have to be aggressive about it. So you can do the make up an excuse if you will. And some people just need to do that because that's hard. Right. Like, it's, it's very hard. vulnerable to say that, like, I'm not comfortable having this conversation right now. That, like, puts you in a vulnerability place. Yeah. So, it's like, this is it's just not a really good time. But, I mean, we can talk about it some other time. How about, you know, I'll call you, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in the instance of a direct belligerent, um, a belligerent confrontation, just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm also just thinking not even, like... 
belligerent or like aggressive confrontation, but like, you know, when you're at an outing or with family or whatever, and things turn to politics or things turn to uh, sports, sports teams, like, I don't know, but like, there's always moments where like the aggression gets high when people are passionate about the conversation. Do you have advice on that? Maybe how to cool things down or or what to do when uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> conversations? Yeah, you. because you know it's hard if you're if you know I for myself I'm I'm part of a very Republican family, but me and my sisters are much more liberal, and it mm-hmm. gets probably brought up almost every holiday. And I think we've gotten better over the years about how to control that. But um, you know, advice on that or at an office party when people are saying things that I might be offended by, like, you know, how, how do we go about this? Okay. So when it comes <laughs> to offense, you can state the offense. And again, and I'm saying this based on personality. Some people it's hard and they don't know what to do. I'm this like the freezer, right. And it just scares them and it makes them all hot and nervous. Their face gets hot. They start sweating. You can Remove yourself at minimum, but if you want to be an advocate and make change, you could always say, this conversation is inappropriate. I understand that you have your views on it, but it makes me feel uncomfortable to hear the things that you're saying, and I wish it were different, but you can make a point to remove yourself from the conversation, and you can make a statement about it. And... One thing that I had to go through in a tough situation, this is the word that came up for me. I've expired, which means I'm (laughs) done. Like I have nothing else to say on this subject is I've expired. And my family started to know that is my word for I can't take anymore and I need a break from this. I've expired Mm -hmm. and I don't have any more words on this. So a couple of things you can deal with that. But when it comes to politics, (sighs) <sighs> I can, I know, like you said, being in a Republican family and knowing that times are really, really challenging, you could see that as an opportunity to give a different viewpoint, if you will. Depends on if you're a fighter or not. Are you a fighter in the situation? Tell me, because it, it depends on if you're a well, fighter think, or if you're... I think a lot an- of my audience is, is more on like the, the personal development track, the spiritual track. They're trying, you know, not to be aggressive in these situations. They don't want to build the heat. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, a lot of us are trying to figure out how to have hard conversations in the right environment. Like, let's say, okay, let's say it's in a safe space where we can comfortably talk and there's not a lot of booze involved. And, um, okay. you know, I think my audience is more trying to have like civil conversations and, and how to maybe help people who are of the same element kind yeah. of pull it down and, and bring it back to a place where we can have conversation and, and learn from each other. Okay. And you can set the stage. You can see that again, see that as an opportunity to shift the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And it's important when you realize that people are having a hard time saying things. And I know you're in that world and you know more about chakras than I would, <laughs> but open up that throat chakra. And the more you use your voice, the easier it gets. And especially if you've been on this path of personal development, you can attempt to shift the environment by saying, we are in a tough time in, in our world and we have varying opinions about things. And you can stay calm because you know this is you know what your triggers are already. You know how anxiety or any type of anger starts to manifest in your body. Like if you're knowing yourself, mm-hmm. then you know when it's time to exit. But mm-hmm. you can be honest and you can state your opinion in a nice way, in a non-aggressive way, still be assertive, still bring light to the situation. And that's typically how I try to address things. Is there something that I can say that can shed light on the situation and make it better? If I don't have the words in heated situations to make it better, then I sometimes choose to remain silent. Mm -hmm. I put a quote on my social media the other day, a wise man once said nothing. And you have to judge, will this matter in five years? Like if you're going through this in your head and you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, Doing the whole double dutch. Should I jump in? Should I say something? Can I shed light? Will it matter? 
in five years, what can I say to shift the energy of this conversation? Because there, like, if you're walking and you're owning your personal power, believe it or not, you might drop a nugget or say something. You might not change the whole room. You're not there trying to convert job. everybody. Right. right. Just be, right. be light. Be you. And just say, may I add, you know, a, a different opinion. This is what I'm thinking about the whole thing. Please consider this or if you would consider it from this point of view you can say things like that right well and I love that you shared words that would be like right out of my mouth like just trying to be the light in every situation and when there are times when you're either being triggered or you're not in a safe space to be the light which happens like I will say there's times when I'm heated and I can't be the light right now then just don't get involved like you know excuse yourself as you would and I always tell my clients whether it's something simple or whatever's happening or like you're just overwhelmed in the kitchen, whatever it is, like take as many bathroom breaks as you need to. That's what I tell people. Like go to the bathroom as much as you need to, sit in there and breathe. <laughs> like whatever your breathing family might judge that you have like a bladder infection or something silly, but like whatever. At least you can get in a quiet space to yourself and recollect. And if you have to do that a hundred times in one night, you do it. Excuse me, or I'll be right back. Those are powerful tools. Yeah. Excuse me for one minute. I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Collect yourself and come back to the conversation. I've even done a hard shift. Sometimes you have to do a hard, a hard left on a conversation too. Yeah. How about those cowboys? How'd you do that? Oh yeah. How about (laughs) them cowboys? Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, somebody else walks by and. Hey, Susan, tell us about that pumpkin pie recipe. That was delicious. And just totally like 180 the other you know, way. Sometimes you have, again, that's a part of shifting the energy. Okay, we've been on this topic for a long time. Let's play a game. Let's, now, that's one of the things you can do too. If you have not a strict and regimented holiday schedule, but if you have things like games or things for people to do, then... Of course, you're going to have people off to the side having conversations, but a lot of times those groups become smaller and you bring everybody into a collective space where Mm -hmm. it's about fun and you're enjoying the moment. If you just have something that's going on that's communicative and that requires people to relate, if you have that level of control, say if it's at your house or even if you show up, bring some games or say, hey, let's let's just play a game. We, you know, you can make a joke about it. Okay, this is getting pretty heavy. I think we just need to take a little break and we'll come back to it. Most of the time you will not come back to it because in that moment, we'll talk about things because it's the hot topic, but keep it moving. You can keep it moving. That makes sense. Okay, Mm -hmm. so let's say if it's a scenario where you know you have to have a hard conversation with somebody, whether it's like setting expectations before the gathering Mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, um, how would you suggest prepping (laughs) for a conversation like that and approaching it? Like if you know ahead of time, like I need to talk with, Mm -hmm. this is just like, I'm throwing something out there. Like I need to talk with my sister about how we're drinking in front of the kids or whatever it is. Like, you know, whatever that is that you need to have ahead of time or there. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. The things that come up in, yeah, the holidays, drinking too much in front of the kids, like sloppy, being sloppy drunk, um, having someone with a potty mouth, ha- talking about those things that are inappropriate, like politics that you wouldn't want around your kids or you wouldn't want in your space. Yeah, that stuff. And you want to address it beforehand. Or trying to resolve yeah. like past traumas beforehand. Like, you know, if, if things have come That's up tough. and you're like, let's address this before we're with the family or, you know, just prepping okay. for any kind of those conversations. Okay. Well, you can reach out to the person. I would prefer a phone call. Sometimes a text works if it's in the form of an invitation. You can Mm -hmm. call them up or you send a text and say, I'm inviting you versus, hey, we need to talk, right? That's like (laughs) makes your flag go up. I'm inviting you to have a conversation about. Before we go into the holidays, let's make make sure the air is clear. Let's go into the holidays with a spirit of love. Whatever the tone that you're trying to set, make sure that's clear. What you're the topic and what you hope to get out of it, or clear the air or agree to disagree. You can give options. We can clear the air. 
move forward or agree to disagree, but we want to have a loving, supportive, you know, joyful holiday season. Sure. What times do you have available? I'm thinking something in the next week, like Christmas. Well, kind of late for Thanksgiving, but <laughs> for Christmas, or if you know in advance, try to do it at least two weeks ahead of time. That way you can process your feelings mm-hmm. and you can get over it and bounce back and be okay in the situation. So set a time, set the tone, and then set some ground rules such as let's do this and do it without name calling, without blaming, without attacking someone's character. Let's address the behavior. If you need to give me examples, we can use I statements when we're talking about it. And we have to stay on topic. As hard as it can be, in those emotional times, we have to stay mm-hmm. on topic. Stick mm-hmm. to the offense, not mm-hmm. how you've hated them all their lives because <laughs> they got all the Care Bears and the Barbies and you got a regular old stuffed brown teddy bear. And so I became jealous of you in that blah, 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 blah kind right, of thing. Right, right. But you can say we've had issues over time. Right, And it's right. showing up in our lives now in this way. And this is the thing that offended me. And it made me think about where this started in me. And I've identified that, but I want to talk about what's going on now. So you can acknowledge right. that. Another thing I've had to do too with, with people who said, seem to hold grudges or bring about things that we've already discussed several mm-hmm. times. A uh, thing that I've learned really works for me is I'll just say, like, if they're trying to bring out something that we've already cleared or so I thought, you know, I, I say, hey, you know, I, I thought we had already settled this in, in whatever conversation. Um, yeah. Is there more to address or can we be finished with that conversation? And like, usually it reminds them that like, cause they might've forgot that we cleared the air on that already or, you know, whatever. And it just yeah. like holds them accountable for like the fact that we're like going in circles now. Like, let's right. Especially that. if you said, if they said that it was okay in that moment right. and they didn't mean it. And that's when it usually pops up again or something else happens. And then they're reminded yeah. of that thing, like you said. So that's, or they that's might perfect. invite them to say, Hey, I thought it was settled in that conversation, but this is clearly still affecting me. We still, right. There's still more. There's something else that you didn't get out or we didn't address. Yeah. And you're good about initiating. I remember when we were roommates and I was like, okay, (laughs) um, you, I, it was what within the first week or first few days. And you were just like, let's, let's talk and about being roommates and you already kind of, let's have a talk about expectations. And I was like, okay. I hadn't done that previously. And it was pretty cool. I respected it. And we talked and it was good. I felt like we had a really good month. You worked a lot though. You worked during the day. Oh my God. But you're, yeah. you're good oh, at initiating. Funny. Yeah. And when you are the initiator, it allows you to take control and set the tone and really yeah. have that time to prepare. So if you know that you have a challenge with somebody, I'm saying this, to help someone, if you know that you have a challenge and it's tough and you can no longer avoid it, even though it could be very uncomfortable, initiate it. Think about what you want the outcome to be, but then also release the outcome because you don't know what the person is going to say, right. if they right. will receive it or respond in kind. But if you do that, at least you walk into the situation feeling like you have a sense of control, not like in a controlling way, but control of yourself. You're taking the onus to initiate it. You acknowledge that it's a challenge and go from there. Yeah. This, you know, something happened very recently in the last six months when I was at home, I had a, a challenge with a friend and I just felt like he was being really rude to me for no reason. And I was really heated about it at first. And I, I like don't usually get heated. So that was really bothering me that I was mad. And I, you know, was, and I was like, this is just not like him. And how dare he do these things. And so yeah. then when I finally kept repeating that to myself, I'm like, Oh wait, this isn't like him. So something else must be going on. So before I address this conversation with him, I need to pause and have some empathy because Again, this is not his normal pattern. So the fact that he's being so mean is not something that else is up. And so I was able to to take them out for coffee. And instead of saying, hey, like you've been so rude to me lately, I immediately just said, hey, I've just been noticing like you've been behaving different lately. Is everything mm-hmm. okay? And they just like let out a ton of emotion. And we're like, I feel like no one's paying attention. And I'm so stressed and overwhelmed. And 
and it was such a different conversation. But if I had gone in it in that heated moment, because yeah. I was mad at how they had treated me and I was able to release that and we had such a good conversation mm-hmm. that would have happened yeah. without pausing. You disarmed, yeah, you disarmed that, that tension and you allowed it to unravel in that way. One of the best questions is, are you okay? Yeah. Sometimes people don't even realize they're up here. And when it comes to holidays and planning and cooking and preparing, if we're, you know, thinking about those subjects, like anything, that's how it's easy for things to escalate. It's easy because we have our own stories going on. Maybe bad oh, things so happen. Okay. Yeah. Like, I gotta get this. It's it just, just doing this. The holidays are anxiety inducing, or maybe some people get depressed around the holidays or just, all of those things that go on, if you're a single person, maybe you lost a loved one, the holidays bring up all of these emotions. They bring them to the surface. Mm-hmm. And when you pair that with alcohol or you're in a group setting and it's high energy, some of that stuff can act as an irritant. Whereas, like you said, the person would normally be okay. But then here you are in this high energy situation where also, you feel like you have expectations to be jolly. Yeah. You have expectations to be free flowing, and you have all of these expectations to be in this positive mood for the holidays when you're maybe you've been masking and maybe you've been hiding it. So, I would say this be aware of yourself, how mm-hmm. you're feeling inside. And if you're managing that, not even managing, like pretending that it's not there, deal with it figure out what it is. And when you go and someone says something, then it's easier to be like, it's okay. Like you said, or to notice. Right. One of the things when I was going through, through things with my sisters, because you know, sisters can go back and forth. And when you get older, I'm from a family of strong women, like women with strong personalities. We're from Louisiana. We say what's on our mind. We can be very spicy. And sometimes we forget that the other person has feelings. And if you notice that this person is different, what I would have liked at a time in my life is the, are you okay? I noticed something is different. Like this is not like you, things like that. This is not like you, or I'm not used to this. Is there something going on? Just to ask before we jump in trying to fix or like you said, address a hard conversation is only hard when we feel like there's a fear that we don't know what to say. We don't know how to handle it. And even if you get nervous about it, it's uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to be hard when you go in with an open mind. Even if the person, again, does not respond. I have to say that. Right. The person just might not respond. They might shut down, but at least you've provided a space for connection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all you want to do to heal and to connect or to resolve. And I think a lot of what we've discussed so far is is more maybe like our personalities where we're a little bit more assertive when we need to be and we're not so afraid of of starting Mm -hmm. the conversation. What would you say to people who are a little bit more shy or introverted who are knowing that they need to have a conversation but like just cannot bring themselves there? What are some tips that they can be practicing to kind of get them the courage to speak their mind? Write down the questions that are, well, think of questions that you would ask of the person. What is it that you are expecting to come from this conversation? That's a good one. Like, what do I want to have? Is this for for me? Sometimes it's for us to be brave. Sometimes it's just for us to stand up and to finally have the opportunity to speak our mind. Um, What is my problem? Ask yourself that. Really, what is my problem? Because sometimes that inciting incident is not the actual problem. Mm. You can come up with a script of how you want to start it. Again, thinking about thinking through what the problem is. What is it that you would like to say that if you feel like you would get nervous, you might need some help? Write it down, script it out. You can practice with someone. Go practice this in the mirror. mirror. Trust your friend. Yes. I like I like standing in Superman position and practice power pose. in the mirror. Yes, power mm-hmm. pose. <laughs> power posing is good, but but definitely practice and be. You can be vulnerable unless the person is 
a, a tyrant and they just don't care at all. But like, if this is a, a friend, then be vulnerable and say, I have wanted to talk to you about this and I've been avoiding it because this is hard and it's uncomfortable, but I know we need to talk about it to move forward. So start with something like that, that's saying this is uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but I'm going to do my best to say what I need to say because I feel like it would help us. And I'm going to throw in here as well that like for women, especially and this some men as well, we've been told our whole lives, maybe that we're too emotional or, yep. you know, we get yep. too emotional in conversation and, and knowing that like that is totally human. And that's how we build connection is through allowing mm-hmm. ourselves to be emotional and to be sensitive yeah. and to just like give ourselves the time. Like if, if we need to like pause in a conversation because we're getting emotional mm-hmm. and not beat ourselves up for that, knowing that that is just us being brave (laughs) and that's perfect yeah brave doesn't always look like you know (laughs) brave (laughs) brave sometimes brave if I go into my Brene Brown sometimes brave is just showing up you know so yeah that's true when you're changing that and I'm so glad that we have people in that space that are are changing what brave looks like changing what courage looks like because I used to be like that too I'm a I'm a crybaby in the sense that if I'm saying something that's emotional, it comes out in the form of tears. And I could be angry about it. Yeah. I can be touched about it. I can be happy about it. But if I stand up and I start saying it, then it used to make me so mad because my voice would get shaky oh, and, yeah. you know, all of this. <laughs> and then the I tears. We chatted about this, Shuli, when we were roommates, <laughs> that like my emotional range between like four and six is like neutral, smiling, everything else is tears. So if it's too happy, too sad, too whatever, like even just like slightly off from normal balance mm-hmm. center, I'm, I'm in tears. And so like, who, who knows what's actually going on behind my brain when I'm in, having tears? It could be good, bad, who knows? Well, tears are, we know for a fact that tears are released though. And yes. when I learned that, that helped me a lot. And on my, my personal freedom journey, like before, because of the fear and the mask and needing to appear strong, I was in a place where I, I appear very nonchalant. I'm pretty laid back for the most part anyway, right. but just nonchalant and almost stoic about certain situations and keeping my game face on. And I'm still working on that. I, I did some training. What was this? Two weeks ago where I went to work on my own craft as I do more speaking to look at what are some some barriers or hurdles that I, I still need to cross. And I got great feedback. But one of the things was I hear it in your, I see it in your gestures. I hear it in your voice, but that coach told me, let it show in your eyes. I didn't realize that my emotions didn't fully travel to my face unless I'm crying. Like I'll laugh and I'm smiling, but if something really hurt me, it's just, I don't need you to see my pain. So if something really hurts me, then I, I take a um, straight face, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Right. But being okay with your emotions and knowing that it is a hard conversation, knowing that it's going to be uncomfortable. If you go into it knowing that without trying to fight against what's natural, mm-hmm. you will be more successful because the goal is to communicate. And so if somebody said something that hurt you, why is it not okay to cry? in that moment. Yeah. And even if it's a, a person that you felt like did it intentionally, your crying is not giving away your power. If you see it that way, but it's really, they take your power if you don't address it. Well, I can't, they don't take anything. You give away your power when you don't address it. And because you're afraid to be vulnerable and let somebody know that, if you want to stand up within yourself, that's one of the things I tell people. It's just first you're going to be honest with yourself. And then it's easier to be honest with other people. And it, again, it doesn't matter if your voice shakes. It doesn't matter if you cry. It, that, that doesn't matter. Like, are you communicating the message from your heart? So think about it like that. I mean, I had to get deep about it. And I know it's hard to be an introverted person or to be shy and you're not used to speaking up for yourself. But once that first situation happens and you know, you did it in love and you know 
there was it was nothing but light then you'll feel okay. Even if the person decides that they're going to keep being who they are, then you still have to make a decision. Maybe this is not the person for me. Maybe it was telling in itself. And I think not, you didn't invite me on to talk about relationships, but sometimes we are also trying to hang on to things that are not serving us. And so maybe it serves as a lesson, like maybe we need to reprioritize the value of this relationship, especially if it's tearing you down. That's, that's true too. And I will say there's been times where I haven't had the courage to speak up yet. And so I have always said like, I'll just write them a letter, but almost always, once I write out the letter, Mm -hmm. I never send it. I then feel comfortable enough to have the conversation. Right. But like sometimes just getting it all out on paper, like I'm a big journal fan, of course, but like when I do it with the intention that I'm going to send it, even though I usually don't, like it just makes it feel more powerful and like gets my voice out. So yeah. Letter writing is powerful. I'm a, yeah, yeah I'm a, like a question person. Like I, I still write Who's it down. Your to question. Write the power of the pen. It's the power of the pen. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, something happened. Well, I think that kind of summed up a lot of what my questions were as far as conversations. And I think you gave some really great tools. I want to sum up in our blog. Um, but wow, thank you so much, Shuli. I'd love to know, like, what are some of the projects you're working on right now? Right now, I am working on my conversation starter t-shirt line. As we've talked about before, my goal is to empower people and equip them with tools to improve their communication. And the conversation starter line is it's fun, it's sassy, it's educational, mm-hmm. and their t shirts like it's sexy to speak correctly, um, words that are not words. It's just a nice, fun way to let people know that irregardless is not a word. Or <laughs> I, I have things on my social media post, and it's not in your face, it's not attacking people who don't know. It's just like putting it out there just in case you didn't know, now you know. It's sexy to speak correctly. I feel That's like communication, yeah, communication is not a lost art. And everything about this line is designed to make communication fun, to let people know that it's, it's sexy and it doesn't have to be blah. Communication is, it's how we connect. It's how we, re- how we relate. And it's time to get back to the human side of communicating because social media and all of that stuff is cool. But let's get back to being human. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's it I so love that, it love it yep thank you oh and how do you find them you can yeah. go to s3ish.com I can't forget about that s3ish.com S3-ish. Is, S3-ish.com and I'll put yeah. that somewhere the letter there. s the number three and ish because it's a little bit of grammar it's a little bit of sass it's some communication all in one and then get ready for my ebook the abcs of vocal image so it's tips Um, The Beatitudes of Speech, letting you know how to navigate um, communication and speaking in public. That will be out in January on Amazon. Yay. And where can they find you, Shuli, if they want to reach out, social media? What's the best place? Where are you at? I'm on Instagram. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. But Instagram, if you want some speech tips, go to Speak Success, Inc., at Speak Success Inc. And then if you want me at Shuli Gibb <laughs> underscore speechy nomad. So you can find me. I'm all you over. I'm dropping all her speech travel. Tips. Yep. I'm all dropping her speech tips. photos. All my travel photos, my personal side, me being sassy, me having fun, and then also sprinkling in tongue twisters, um, speech tips, and not words. Love it. I'll throw some in the blog post as well so I can see some of your awesome tips. Uh, thank you so much, Shuli. It's been such a pleasure and I can't wait to get together again. And I'm sure I'm going to be hiring you as a coach when I start, you know, touring the world with my talks. We'll You're see putting that out there in the universe. Good. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm, awesome. I'm here. I know. I have to, we have to connect. And can I just give you a quick blessing? I'm sure. going to hijack. Okay. Like you said, you have that out there. It's in the atmosphere. And right now I am standing in agreement with you. Taryn, you are amazing. And I have seen your growth all throughout remote year. I'm one of those people 
that you have to convince me, right? Like in terms of, you don't really have to convince me, but I'm a watcher and that just means I'm a watcher, I'm an observer. And I watched you be consistent and I watched you be diligent and I watched you stay in the fight and I watched you be strong and I watched you be vulnerable all throughout remote year. And I watched you be loved all throughout remote year. And something I probably never shared with you that there were just parts of you that reminded me of me. Like really, I could tell that you had it in you and you had purpose in you and you wanted it and you were really driven. And your 2019, I wish for you that it is amazing and mind blowing in ways that you didn't even think about in ways that you didn't even plan for that you sit back at the end of 2019 and just think what the heck just happened <laughs> like that it's on that level of amazing for you and that you have more and more courage that you have more and more freedom in a way that is effortless thank you thank you so much Julie I'm like over here getting all <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I see that for both of us. I just like the next year, every year I'm moving forward, just the growth. Um, and this is what it means to really cultivate your tribe. You guys to bring people around you who are going to encourage you and, and keep you moving and hold you accountable to the things that you say you're going to do. So thank you so much, Julie. I love you. It's such a blessing to have you on here and I can't wait to share you with everyone. All right, everyone, make sure that you subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Check out the blog post. I'm going to be giving you a lot more information on Shuli and sharing some of her tips over there. So head on over to the blog and we'll see you again next week. Bye.